What is good? We're back. We got a good one for you today. We're looking into the future. We're going to talk about five wide receivers you need to know for 2025. And the first one we're going to hit is Tetaroa McMillan, or as we like to call him, the Tet Offensive. Uh, but he isn't surprising anybody with his big ass. He's coming in at 6'5", 212 pounds, 21 years old. He led all true freshmen with 702 yards on 38 receptions and eight scores. And then in 2024, he came out the gate swinging with that 304 and four game that I'm sure everybody saw at this point. But let's take you back to 23 to look at a full season of production. In 2023, Tet was 10th in targets with 117, 16th in receptions with 80, 8th in yards with 1,236, 19th in yards per reception with 15.5, 11th in touchdowns with 10, 22nd in yak with 478, and 19th in yards per route run with 2.72. He was tied for third in first downs with 58 and a 2.4% drop rate. That's very low for you guys scoring at home. All that together forms a very, very solid 2023 campaign. I think most people right at this point probably have him as the one or two for your wide receiver rankings coming into next year. I think the best way to go about it is you got a big fella here who can run a really solid whip route, and that's about all you need to know. And in saying that, I just think it's a good example of that he's not just this stiff, big frame. He can break down a little bit, and I think the flexibility is really impressive to me. He really just shows you how fluent he is in receiver, meaning that he isn't just a one-trick pony with the wow stuff. You saw a UTEP game in 2023, double coverage, the one-handed snag, so you, you have examples of that, but... He also does a lot of the other little things that you don't expect somebody of his size to be able to do. He's got great late hands. The body control is really good. A great plucker. He's really strong, isn't bothered by the physical physicality of DBs getting handsy with him. The strike zone with this guy is almost unlimited, meaning he can kind of put the ball anywhere. And, and, you know, he obviously has a huge advantage of with his size and, and range with his arms. But he's a really good catcher. Of the football either way. Uh, and I even saw him throw pretty TD, so he could do that for you. Arizona had a bye week this week, so we didn't get to see Tet add to his total. But coming in today, he had 453 yards, 19.7 yards per reception, and four TDs. All right, let's move on to Luther Burden the third. 5'11, 208, coming in at 20 years old. A thousand tutties from you is never too much. A little Luther Vandross for you. If you don't know, ask your mama. He absolutely shredded 2023, 81% in the slot in 23. So a bit more of a slot player here. 10th in targets with 117. 10th in receptions with 83. 10th in yards with 1194. Eight TDs. Second in a yak, 718. Fourth in yak per reception, 8.7. Third in yards per route run, 3.55. 27th in A dot with 13. 10th in missed tackles force with 20. And first downs, he had 42 of them. Now, this is a different type of receiver from Tet, but this kind of guy is really my kryptonite. I'm, I'm not, not going to front here. He, he's a yak king, and that's the kind of guys that I really end up falling in love with. Now, don't get it twisted. He could still get the big shot down the field, but you could literally just spam screens and slants with Luther, and he could have a day. Not that he can't run a lot of routes. You just have to get the ball in his hands if all else fails. He's so quick, he's tough in traffic, and he can ad-lib on the scramble drill. I just, like, half the league at this point seems to be running a Shanahan-esque system, and I feel like Burden would really thrive in that type of schemed-up system. Obviously, he's not Debo Samuel. Nobody's Debo Samuel, but just that kind of play style and, you know, the different routes and the different things, just get the ball in his hands and let him work, do the yak, and then take the shots with him. He can kind of do all that, and that's kind of how the Niners use Debo a little bit. He's obviously not as big as Debo. Nobody is. But this kind of guy, I think, is plug and play, especially in that style of system. This week, he had Vandy. He had six receptions for 76 yards and two touchdowns. We're recording this on a Saturday. And you're going to add that to his total of 16 targets, 13 receptions, 181 yards, 
13.9 yards per reception and two TDs in 24. So not terribly into the 24 season. Mizzou's a good team. They got a bunch of good receivers on the team to spread it around, but Luther Burden had an OT uh, touchdown in this, in this game to kind of seal the deal. Obviously they had to go on defense and, and make a defensive stand, but this guy's always a problem every time he's on the field and he is so much fun to watch. All right, let's get to our third name to know Trey Harris at Ole Miss. He's 6'3", 210, 22 years old, so a little older than the rest of these guys. He'll be 23 in February. Transferred from uh, Louisiana Tech, where he had 64 receptions, 925 yards, 10 TDs. He did have some drops over there, but seemed to have cleaned that up. He went from six drops to two from 22 to 23 in moving from La Tech to Ole Miss. Uh, He's got a PFF grade of 89.6, which is very strong in 23, and off to a great start in 24 with a 91.2 receiver grade. Uh, He led Ole Miss in 2023 with 851 yards on just 47 receptions. He was out wide 84.4% of the time, so a bit more out wide than our guy Luther up there. Averaged 18.1 yards per reception, eight touchdowns, 3.18 yards per route run, good for 10th, 310 yak yards, 13.4 A dot led team, uh, and 38 first downs, again, first on the team. Now, again, once again, this is a different style of receiver than the other two guys we just kind of discussed. He gives you kind of that big body X possession type receiver vibe to me. He's not necessarily a burner. He just sort of knows where to be on the field. Physicality, to me, is a bit more of his calling card. Contested catch, my ball kind of mentality, routinely throwing defenders off of him after the catch. Great body control, really solid hands that that we've seen at Ole Miss. You know, and and to say that he's not to burner isn't that he's not fast enough. He certainly gets behind people routinely, but I think that, to me, that kind of just... He just kind of knows where to be. The you know Luther's got his skill set that you can really put his hands on. He's kind of that yak guy who can move all around the field, quick start stop ability. Tet's the big bodied guy who who can do more things. And Trey to me doesn't necessarily have a distinct calling card, but he is a very good receiver. All he does is make you know highlight plays and and lead the team in, in just about every receiving category now they do have a bunch of other great wide receivers there uh, and old miss is absolutely on a heater this year they are currently up 24 7 on georgia southern and trey is at it again putting up six receptions for 141 and one in that contest currently and we can add on to his season total Uh, Three games in, he's got 32 targets, 28 receptions, 436 yards, 15.6 yards per reception, and two TDs so far, not including the game we are currently in that has not ended. So love Trey Harris. I kind of have these guys how I'd have them ranked so far as as we're talking to them. This isn't obviously the overall my favorite top five guys. We just picked top five guys that uh, seem to be have a consensus that everybody kind of likes. And as we were going through them, I kind of have put them in the order that I kind of like them as, as we were going through. So three really, really strong receivers there to start this show off and this season off. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages. All for your pleasure. Let's keep the theme going. We'll switch it up with a bit of a different type of receiver. We'll go Isaiah Bond here for our fourth receiver. 5'11", 180 pounds, 20 years old. Uh, will be 21 in March. He transferred from Alabama. So he really hadn't had a huge season stat-wise just yet. I think you can attribute some of that to Milrow being pretty erratic, inaccurate passer through big chunks of last season. I know people love to hate Quinn Ewers, uh, but I think this was a great move for Bond. Although you know, I love some DeBoer, so uh, and, I, and I, I think I think Bam is in good hands. But I think I think this was a really nice move for Bond to increase his stock, kind of moving forward. Uh, sophomore season at Bama in twenty three, he was fifty eight point six percent in the slot and forty percent out wide. Uh, he had seventy five targets, forty nine receptions, six hundred and seventy one yards, four TDs, two point two yards per route run, and thirty one first downs. 
The first thing that jumps out with me with Isaiah Bond is, is the vertical game. He can get you a, a score real quick, get down the field. That That's what jumps off the page to me. He's got good speed, good acceleration. The start-stop is really good, very fluid mover, has a bunch of different releases, some really good ones, uh, and all that stuff leads to just a really consistent separator for me. So this guy kind of does everything pretty well. He's, he's not a huge fella, maybe not quite as strong in traffic as, say, a guy like Luther Burden. So maybe he could get a little improvement there. Big time vertical threat for Isaiah Bond. And in 2024, we've seen him out wide a little more at Texas, 75.7% and 24.3% in the slot. They are currently up 28 nothing or 28-3 rather against UL Monroe. And he's got two receptions for 75 yards. And we can add that to his season total. 17 targets, 13 receptions, 215 yards, 16.5 yards per reception, and three touchdowns. Playing with Arch Manning today because yours is out. But Isaiah Bond, a lot of people have him projected in the first round. A lot of people love Isaiah Bond. A four-star coming out and then just transferred over to Texas. Like I said, I think this was a really good move for him. Uh, and a lot of people have him projected as a first round guy. I think he's going to, we're going to continue, continue to see Texas get into the meat of their schedule. And I think Bond's going to be a big part of what they're doing moving forward. All right. Last but not least, we're going with our guy, Travis Hunter here, because how could you not? 6'1, 185 pounds, 21 years old, May birthday. This is just a really extremely focused and dedicated kid. 4.0 GPA from everything I can find. He just shits, eats, and breathes football. He's either at the facility getting treatment, at the facility practicing, or at home playing video games or whatever, just, just relaxing. Like, no nonsense, not really into all the partying or anything, extremely focused on what he's trying to do, and clearly one of the most unique prospects that we've seen in a very long time, maybe dare I say, since his head coach, uh, a top corner in the nation. And if he keeps performing on both sides of the ball, like he is, we're obviously talking about receivers right now, but he's a top corner in the nation. He's going to be in the running for the Heisman. Currently he's at plus 3000. That's 12th overall, but you know, Colorado, not maybe performing up to the standard of, of, of what everybody might like to see, or maybe, maybe some people don't want to see it, uh, but I, I like to see it. I want to see good competition, uh, but maybe they're not quite there yet. And usually this is typically a quarterback award on, on a good team. But Travis Hunter, I think that what he's doing and the performances that he's putting together and, and the amount of playing time he's putting in at a really, really high level is just special, special, special. And just all around seems like a great kid. In 2023, the receiving stats were uh, and he missed a few games uh, in that after that Colorado State game, 73 targets, 57 receptions, 721 yards. 12.6 yards per reception, five touchdowns, and 18 missed tackles. Force on pretty low volume is very solid there. In 2024, we saw the season start off with that ridiculous catch in game one where he kind of defied physics, and it was just he there. you weren't stopping him from catching that ball. And that's the kind of unique ability that brings Travis Hunter, who's probably going to be, you know, most likely a top five, top ten pick. And we're not sure exactly how the NFL or, or is going to want to use him or if it's going to be more receiver or more cornerback based. They're saying that he's going to still do both and play a lot. That's a situation that that, uh, you know, is is going to be a little dicey kind of moving forward and, until we can figure out exactly how he'll be used. We use this term a lot, but kind of a once in a generation kind of talent to be doing both things at, at such a really, really high level. Already in 24, Hunter has 30 receptions on 34 targets, 342 yards, 11.4 yards per reception, five touchdowns, 2.65 yards per route run, and 16 first downs. And currently against Baylor, we have him at three receptions for 45 yards, Colorado losing that contest currently. Uh, so these are the top five names you need to know. We will be hitting you with quarterbacks. We'll be hitting you with mock drafts, trying to keep you ahead of the curve on this 25 class coming. Be sure to check us out on the Patreon side of things. You can hit us with a $5 holler. You get the Discord. You get an extra episode every week, 9 p.m. on Sunday night, uh, kind of Sunday recap of the day. And then obviously we record on Monday and, and give you a whole bunch of shows throughout the week. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. If you're listening on the podcast, five-star review. This is all brought to you by Underdog. If you're not playing on Underdog's Pick'ems, you absolutely should go try those out. Use promo code FFD, get you a little bonus at checkout. We appreciate you guys, and we will catch you next time. Peace.